Fear. Crisis. The Matrix. Path of Neo. Doom 2016. These are all games that somewhat remember me of something that released in 2023. Something that dared to take modern graphics in its hand. Something that dared to go outside of the box and put the absolute main focus in its carnage and combat. Something that absolutely is not for everyone. Something that has so many particles flying around at once that you get amazed that your PC isn't blowing up playing this. And I'm of course talking about the highly anticipated Kirby's Pink World. The game where the man in the red hat finally sets his wings free. And the blood flies everywhere. You get to be the most badass super soldier the world has ever seen. And there is no stopping you whatsoever. Fear, subject 106. Fear the player controlling him. And most of all, make sure to leave nothing breathing. So, what is Kirby <laughs> Trapang 2? Well, this, my friends, is the most satisfying, action-packed first-person shooter that you can find in all of 2023. You start off in some sort of prison where you tried to escape, you lost all your memory, and you now rock some crisis slash max pain super abilities something ish 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 where you can slow down time, pick up enemies and throw them like they're pillows, slide and jump like Spider-Man, and use a cloak like you can in Crisis. And using your newfound abilities, you finally manage to escape the prison by the help of some mysterious organization that is trying to take down the mysterious organization that captured you in the first place. Set on taking your revenge, you join the mysterious organization that helped you escape. And yeah, honestly, I don't have much clue as to what is going on here, but it really feels awfully put together and it doesn't make much sense at all. I even tried reading up on some of the lore that lay scattered throughout the levels and they make even less sense, honestly. I mean, nothing they do makes any sense. But you know what? The further you get to the end, the little more sense it makes, but not enough. But hey, I kind of like that there is some effort in putting together a story, but it feels like they had a vision for it halfway into creating it. They gave up and just threw it all together in one big mishmash, which I ended up not liking that much. <laughs> no. In between missions, you will ride a helicopter to your base. In there, you can customize your character's appearance, even though the only thing you see are gloves, pants and shoes. And the only thing you see the most? Well, that's the gun. And they have no unlockable skins for the guns, a real miss in my opinion there. And other than that, in the hub world, you can enter horde mode, aka endless mode, with a bunch of different maps. But there is no real innovation to it. And lastly, in the hub world is where you pick your next mission, whether it be a side mission or a main one. And that's all that you can do in the hub world. The hub world screams more things put in there. It has the size. Oh yeah, there is a firing range in there as well, but still not enough. There's no humans there. There's no one that you can talk to. There is no interactivity with anything whatsoever. The things I mentioned are the things you're gonna find in there. But friends, the story is not why we are here. So I want to emphasize that you shouldn't be looking at this game if you're looking for something with a deep story. As an example, Fear's story is much more well put together and somewhat understandable compared to this. However, Trapang 2 features a lot of more carnage in action. It does have less horror, less storytelling, but a whole lot of more carnage. So I can't review Trapang 2 without talking about the freaking guns, eh? And I won't per as usual spoil all of them for you, but I will however talk about my top 3 in the game. So my absolute favorite and the one that you have to play with for the majority of the time or else is the shotgun!
Now I honestly think I found my favorite shotgun in any game ever. Yeah, you heard it folks. This is the best shotgun ever created in any game. 10 out of 10 game. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, okay, hold up, hold up. It's not over just yet. But the shotgun, it is a dream. It has the kickback. It has the perfect damage output. It has the audio. It has amazing reload animations. It just has it all, damn it. Now, I can't actually find a single bad thing to say about it, apart from there not being enough ammo for it in the levels. But you can fix that with cheats. Because yeah, you unlock cheats as you go in this game. Don't use them before you finish the campaign though, or else you won't be able to get any achievements. But after you finished it, go have fun. Unlock all the cheats that you can and activate them. Now, my second favorite is the grenade launcher. And mostly because the visuals of the explosions is so incredibly satisfying. <laughs> It visualizes the force of the blast beautifully. The environment that gets destroyed with the blast has particles flying everywhere. The gore from the once intact enemies is masterfully crafted. But is it good? Yeah, it is good. But it almost feels too good actually. I don't know if I dare say it, but it almost feels overpowered. And for that I did not use it as much. Because things almost got too easy with it. Weird thing to say, but hey, it's true. And I gotta speak truth when I do a review. But that does not take away the fact that this is one awesome grenade launcher still. Now before I get into my third most liked weapon in the game, I want to mention that you can customize your guns. You can't change the skins of them, but you can add different attachments, changing the rate of fire, damage output, switching the bullets for incendiary rounds and so on. Which I think is a really cool feature in the game. It adds depth to the combat and it adds fun. It's fun testing out different attachments, okay? And you find these attachments along your journey through the campaign and side missions. And it really adds a 550th layer of depth to the already amazing gameplay. It's very interesting. I like it. Oh, you thought that was it, huh? No, no, no. Along the campaign, you will also come across a serum. This serum, serum, similar, will allow you to dual wield all the guns in the game. And that sounds quite overpowered, right? Well, it fucking is. I am so ready for this. My whole body is ready for this. Now the third one is the kick. You got some amazing kicking abilities in this game. You can kick when standing, you can kick when sliding, you can double kick in the air, which knocks out most enemies in one go. Worth mentioning though, is that this one takes a little bit of getting used to. It is not the easiest to nail in a satisfying way, but once you do get the hang of it, god damn it feels good. And if you jump kick in slow-mo and actually knock someone, well, you get a boost in airtime, making it possible to line up another kick on another enemy. And that, my friends, is very satisfying, and the animation for it is surprisingly well done in my opinion. Now don't go thinking that the rest of the guns are bad, because they are not. The absolute worst weapon in the game is the grenade. It's somewhat hard actually getting kills with it, as the enemies are so smart that they run away from the grenade before it even detonates. And the impact grenade, it doesn't really explode an impact, I don't know what's going on here, but you can shoot the grenades, so if you throw a grenade and then shoot it when it's laying next to the enemies, well, then you get a big bang and they're gonna die. But sometimes that's easier said than done. So the kicking is very much connected to the movement of the game. And the movement is fast, but it is tied to a stamina bar, and in my opinion, I wish the stamina bar would have been a little more generous. It does run out quite quick, but it replenishes as you get kills, even so much so that you get bonus stamina if overcharging it. 
but the problem is that all the weapons except for one works best in close range, meaning you want to slide and run your way towards the enemies, and the areas often being quite large makes your stamina deplete before even reaching the enemy, making for a very anticlimactic moment. You're planning your strike, you come close enough to pull off a slide, and your finger is ready on the slow-mo button, and you're just waiting to pull the trigger. You are just about to blow someone's face off in slow-mo with the shotgun when sliding, but it all gets interrupted because you just ran out of stamina before pulling that slide off. Son of a and the abilities, they work pretty much the same. Kill stuff to charge them up and use it to deplete it very fast. But I do like this mechanic a lot more for the abilities though. It doesn't really need to be in the stamina. Give me a bigger stamina bar instead. But for the abilities, it works great. Because rarely do you actually turn on slow-mo before you are close enough to the enemy. And then getting a kill, well, it's gonna recharge the usage for it meaning you can stay in slow-mo for longer. And that really encourages the fast-paced and ultra-violent combat that this game is trying to boast. Now the levels, they are very, very well designed. The further into the game I came, the more impressed I got. Oh man, I wish I lived in a cellar right now. Oh man, this looks beautiful. Oh, this looks beautiful. And that is to say that it was pretty damn good from the get-go. But the game does not hold back. Visually, it dares to build some amazing scenery with dynamic lighting and incredible attention to detail. There is honestly just stuff upon stuff everywhere in each level that flies everywhere and blasts into particles beautiful to look at as you wreak havoc. <laughs> Now the levels, they're also very lengthy, but with variation inside them, going from running segments to corridor shootings, bigger arena style areas and bosses. And in, and in my opinion, there is not much here to not like. Visually, they are stunning. Architecturally, they have been crafted with great gameplay in mind. TikTok attention span wise, there is something new and exciting happening around every corner. And I absolutely love the fact that you get to travel around the world as you go through the campaign and each of the levels has some sort of reference to the country that you're actually in. The same goes for the side missions, by the way. Now, the enemies that you will come across from time to time in the well-designed levels, they are plenty. They range from your generic soldier to your cultist-looking guy to this moth-looking demon. Now, their main purpose in the game, however, apart from the moth demon and other bosses, is to be toys for you to play around with. That is a new toy for you. Thinking of this game as a huge playground would not be wrong at all. Sometimes, but very few times, are the enemies actually a real threat to you. Most of the time, they're just there for you to find different ways to blow them into pieces. Which might sound a little underwhelming, but it is not. Now, all the before-mentioned mechanics and skills puts your brain to the test, because if you're not playing the game using all the tools in the toolbox, well, I'm sorry to say then, you're playing this game wrong. And if you do think it is way too easy, so much so that it takes away the fun for you, well, I'm happy to say that it does have six different difficulty levels, from easy to rage mode. And nope, I have not even touched rage mode yet. Maybe I will do it one day, but I have not so far. They are not particularly smart, but they don't feel overly dumb either. However, they do aim like stormtroopers too. And if you know, you know. And know this, even though the enemies might feel really easy, where the real challenge is, is in the bosses. Now the bosses in the game, they were not very impressive. They were quite challenging, but they did not offer any unique mechanics more than get out of the way, unload a mag, run away and unload another mag. And keep on doing that until the damn thing is dead. I mean, it would have been cool with something more unique here, but at the same time, it is a $30 game developed by four people and some contracted guys. And so far, everything else is mighty impressive, even without those things considered. Honestly, this literally blows any AAA game released in the past five years right out of the door. And this is not an overstatement. Oh, this is cool. Now, another thing that the game offers are side missions. And they are very much like you come to expect side missions to be. Very simple. Honestly, they are more or less an extension to the horde mode that already exists in the game. But what could motivate you to play them more than giving you another reason for the amazingly fun gameplay is the fact that the ones completed on various difficulty levels, it unlocks cosmetics for you. Really pointless in my book, but I won't judge if it is a driving factor for you. Remember though, there are no skins for the guns. Such a miss. And it would have been such a motivation for me if 
that existed. But there is a small motivation for me though to go into these side missions, and that is as I mentioned previously, weapon attachments gathered around the side missions and the campaign. And if you're looking for that incendiary bullet for some particular gun, well it might just be laying in one of the side missions. Now the audio in the game is... it's good. absolutely love how every single gun sounds. They all have the punch to them. The same goes for the explosions. The visuals combined with the audio is fantastic. And the ambience and music, I think it fits the game like a freaking glove. Now I heard a few people thinking that the music doesn't fit the game at all. Well, I'm here to highly disagree on that. I think they managed to create something fantastic with the heavy metal that manages to sound unique to the game and really amping up the hectic moments to insane levels. And when the game calms down, or get scary? Well, the dynamic audio and music follows along perfectly. Now combine the amazing audio with some for the most time beautiful visuals and you got one hell of an experience. The visuals alone, they managed to grapple my attention multiple times, making me stop and just look at the scenery. Everything from the architectural design of to the incredibly atmospheric moments when the game just goes dark with nothing but moody lights and music. It's a handcrafted masterpiece if I may say so. But I have to mention, it does have its flaws here and there. It doesn't look incredible all the time, but when it does, it really, really does. And it does it for the absolute majority of the time. But I did encounter some graphical glitches here and there. The Unreal Engine 4 has been put to real good use in this game. And I don't even think I mentioned how beautifully crafted the gore is. And how you can hear every bullet hitting the enemy with this penetrating, fleshy, meaty, satisfying sound. And all of the things I've mentioned so far thus make one of the best FPSs that I have ever played. And I'm not even done with the review yet. It's actually hard to stop thinking about the next time I get to jump into this game just to have fun and cause some other carnage. Trapang 2 is a game that will leave you breathless, both from the action-packed gameplay and the non-stop laughter you get from being one of the most powerful super soldiers you ever played as. From the moment you start playing, you'll be hooked on the sheer fun of it all. The game is a joyous bloodbath where creativity in combat reigns supreme. The graphics, they are stunning, and the sound effects are so well put together that you will feel like you're right in the middle of the freaking action and it will get your heart racing. So my question to you is, are you ready for the carnage that awaits you?